What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out the crazy wrestling bumps that destroyed Chris Benoit's mind. Now, we all know Chris Benoit, he took some hellacious bumps, he took some hellacious punishment to his body, hellacious chair shots, all types of stuff. And the idea is that over the years, the, the headbutts, the chair shots, all the stuff that he was taking ultimately caused his brain to have a severe case of cte which may have led to what happened towards the end of his life and uh subsequently him killing uh some of his family members so you know with that in re in relation wwe for the most part after that whole situation and looking into it they're they're definitely very strict on uh, chair shots to the head anything dealing with head trauma if anyone gets a concussion they're quick to call off the match and 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 do protocols to make sure that the individual is okay you may not even see them for a while depending on how severe the concussion may have been so we're gonna check this out um and see some of these moments that may have may have led to the demise of Chris Benoit unfortunately and it just goes to show that wrestling even though some may say it's all oh, it's fake and all this other stuff man they do get injured they do get you know types of injuries that you know can be uh life altering after they're done with their re wrestling career so we're gonna check this out let's get right into this one man one tell this on one tell Chris Benoit took some of the most insane risks and punishment of any wrestler ever. Jesus Christ, bro. Today, we're going to cover many of these moments in a special case study, not in an attempt to glorify Benoit in any way, but instead to show the lengths a wrestler can go in the ring and the resulting long-term negative effects that can come from this, specifically when it comes to head and neck injuries. Oh my God. This is a series of clips of the hardest hits, biggest bumps, and oh. worst injuries Chris Benoit suffered throughout his career that we've compiled into one video. In almost every Benoit match, no matter the setting, you'll find a dangerous spot or bump that goes beyond the point oh. of being safe. Oh my god! Even if Chris avoided injury after taking a rough bump, the risk was just not worth it. As is typically the case in wrestling, it may not be one particular bump or fall that causes the most damage. It's the accumulation of it all over the years. And yeah. in Benoit's case, decades. Oh! oh! So imagine the effect that this had on a wrestler like Chris, someone who left it all in the ring every night, working a high intensity style where he made everything look real with no exceptions. Just look at the way Benoit delivered a superplex in his WCW days. This was a move he wasn't even on the receiving end of, yet Chris would over rotate and nearly fold himself Ooh. like an accordion. Oh, Benoit's one step ahead. Oh. And Benoit hit the back of his head that time. Malenko up with him now. He's got him up top. Oh my God. The tenacity of Benoit, the idiocy. That's how he got those 25 Oh. Bret Hart's stern and first turnbuckle bump was also a recurring spot in Benoit's matches. Bret has spoken about how this was always one of the hardest bumps he would take in a match. It was uh -huh. done in a way to give back to whoever he was wrestling. And just like the hitman, Chris Ooh. attacked the buckle with great force each time. Oh, Bro, he's running full speed. He's not... He's not sugarcoating that. He's running full speed at the turnbuckle, straight chest area. If you're not alive, oh! you're on defense. Benoit even went one step beyond by allowing his opponent to hit him in the back of the head after Chris had already smashed his chest into the corner. I'll tell you what, Benoit. Oh, oh. one of the most oh. awesome competitors. Like him or not, Benoit has that other gear, that magical next gear that every great superstar is oh. going to have. Oh, man. The boot right to the back of the head. Benoit could never phone it in. Everything had to be intense, physical, and for real. At least on the superplex and turnbuckle spot, Benoit had full control over how he took the bump. Unlike the occasions where opponents dropped Chris on his head, these might seem like close calls where Benoit narrowly avoided serious oh. injury. But as we've already stated, bumps and hard landings like these all add up over the course of a career. Oh! oh. oh. 
Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh. Ah, oh, this is tough. bump that ultimately gave Chris one of the worst injuries of his career occurred at King of the Ring 2001. It happened during a move Benoit regularly performed, a back suplex from the top rope. This occurred a month after Chris previously hurt his neck during a TLC match Ooh. on SmackDown. The back superplex is always going to be a tough spot to take no matter what, but the accumulation factor and constant wear and tear while going full throttle every night meant this bump was the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh man! <laughs> oh. Chris ruptured a disc that fragmented into his spinal column, forcing him to miss a full year of action. Benoit eventually recovered, but the nature and severity of this type of injury meant it could still cause him problems in the future. This was pretty much a guarantee given his style of wrestling, which Chris yeah. refused to tone down despite the injuries. The Wrestling Observer News there states that it was shortly after neck injury that painkillers became an issue for Benoit, much like his idol the... Yeah. And it's not just Benoit, it was a lot of wrestlers because at that time, bro, it was about, yeah, you injure, you get back. You're trying to get back to where you were. You're trying to get to the top of the card. That's where the money's at. So a lot of wrestlers were wrestling injured. They just took painkillers, got addicted to painkillers. I mean, we, we all know about Perk Angle. My man was out here taking 70 pills almost a day. Like, just ridiculous amounts of pills to cope with the pain. So, yeah. It makes sense. He's out there wrestling a very dangerous style. And to stay on the card, to keep making money, let me take these painkillers to numb the pain when I go out there. Dynamite Kid, Benoit felt he had to go a step beyond when it came to the way he performed in the ring and how he looked physically. This meant using steroids to enhance his body to look more believable against the bigger wrestlers he worked against. This applied even more so in WWE, which was historically uh -huh. considered the land of the giants. If Benoit was to receive a sustained push, which included reaching the main event, he knew it meant having to maintain an enhanced look. This was yeah. the same experience his best friend Eddie Guerrero had gone through. Both broke down walls showing that a smaller wrestler could become world champion, but in doing so, they ultimately gave their lives to the wrestling business. Like Eddie, Chris was shown to have an enlarged heart at the time of his passing due to steroid use. Chris Benoit's sister-in-law once said, The medical examiner told us after the autopsy that Chris was on his way to death within 10 months. His heart Damn. was huge, about three times normal size, and it was ready to blow up at any moment. Damn. Guerrero passed away from heart failure in 2005, a passing that drove Chris into a spell of depression. When yeah. it came to Benoit's steroid usage, the anabolics were thought to have contributed to the reduction of his mental and emotional state. As seen from the text message exchange, and then there's the thing too. So it could have been a combination with, you know, the CTE, with the, the mental brain trauma, the concussions, whatever else, on top of the emotional distress of losing Eddie. I think that's what really tipped him over. Eddie was his anchor, essentially. And once he lost that, his emotional, mental state, that right there kills people. Not just the physical, the emotional. Your mind can be your biggest enemy. On top of your mind not being 100% from the wear and tear and abuse on your body. On top of the steroids. On top of the, the overuse of painkillers. That's a combination for disaster. It is. It really is. And we just didn't know what type of disaster that would be exchanges with his wife Nancy in the months before Chris brutally took the life of Nancy and their son Daniel. These texts highlight the marital issues Chris and Nancy were going through in the lead up to the tragedy. And my words to Chris at that time were, Chris, you're a very accomplished wrestler. You have the ability to go in and wrestle. Why are you doing these things? And his response to me at the time was, Dad, if I want a job, I have to. Chris Benoit asked for time uh -huh. off last year, four months. He was given four months off. But what anybody wants to say, if he had any problems, he could have taken care of them in those times. He could have asked for help. If he chooses not to ask, because nobody else can help him. There's no correlation between taking steroids and what happened to Chris Benoit. Human beings are flawed. After then taking his own life, Benoit was shown to have a brain resembling that of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. This makes footage of Chris receiving blows directly to the head very uneasy to watch. That yeah. is why they call it a hot Oh my god. He's planning that time, guys. 
Oh. Oh. Oh my God! Throughout his career, Benoit suffered countless undiagnosed concussions. It's been said by concussion experts that this would have played a role in what happened later due to how the head trauma and brain damage contributed to the decline of Benoit's mental state. After his passing, Chris was shown to have been suffering from a severe case of chronic brain disorder known as CTE. They went on to say that Benoit's brain was the worst that they'd ever seen. Opponents such as Kevin Thorne and MVP revealed that in his final months, Benoit had memory issues. Chris had difficulties traveling, so chose to call everything in the ring instead. Unprotected steel chair shots were short one of the leading causes of concussions in wrestling and unfortunately Chris was on the receiving oh. end of some vicious ones and who is that laid face first on the outside oh Benoit is out yep oh my god oh my god oh 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 Oh! Aside from the nasty bumps Ooh. and head trauma, Benoit also took some incredible aerial risks during matches. The match of all matches. Oh! Oh! His signature dive to the outside resulted in numerous wicked landings to the floor. He could see things that would happen before they happened. Jeez! Benoit with the floor on his tights, strongly representing the Look at oh my god Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh Oh That one right there, bro. That one, ah, oh, we've seen this one on the channel, but Jesus Christ. Um, his lower back had to be GG'd. Holy, bro. I can't believe it. The diving headbutt was one move in particular that caused Benoit the most damage. It's a maneuver that was originally used by Harley Race. Race condemned the headbutt and discouraged wrestlers from using it due to the spinal issues it caused them. Those who went on to most famously use the move, including Benoit, all suffered serious neck and head injuries during their careers. No wrestler performed the diving headbutt more than Benoit. Every night, Chris soared through the sky before crashing and burning mm -hmm. to the ground, doing so from great heights and with rapid velocity. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro. Many of Benoit's landings were brutal. He would come down in different ways each time, slamming his head on different parts of his opponent's body, or God forbid, a weapon. Chris Benoit! Oh! Benoit. Oh! oh my god, Benoit! The knees! Beautiful! Oh! oh man, what a counter! Burke gets the knees up right into the skull! He is going to ring his bell. Oh! That's what it is! Diving oh, head oh, oh. into the back! John Robinson! Oh! Oh! But even if Chris landed without quote unquote issue, there was no way to do this move safely. Yeah. It was a mini car crash every single time. Is perched on the neutral turn. Oh! Went for the diving headbutt off the top rope. Vicky screaming at Benoit. And the headbutt and Chavo rolled out of the way. Place his body again. Crazy, bro. Breaking his neck in 2001, Benoit was advised to stop doing the headbutt once he returned. Chris refused, stating it was a key piece of his identity in the ring. Oh my god, bro. Looking for that diving headbutt, but he missed. Benoit on the This one. This one right here, bro. I'll never forget this one, bro. 
as soon as he landed this shit, ah, bruh, it looked like that shit sucked horribly. Look, just if you haven't seen it. Oh my god. Benoit gave his life to pro wrestling, but in the end, he cruelly took two others with him who didn't have a choice in Nancy and Daniel. Chris Benoit's story is a cautionary tale. You can dedicate your life to pro wrestling, but it should never be at the cost of your own and the people closest to you. For yeah. ultimately, it's the life you live outside the ring that matters most. Yeah, man. This is unfortunate, bro. This was definitely unfortunate, man. And it's just a testament to, you know, the wrestling business as a whole what it was in that time period it was different it was a it was the wild wild west you know your spot on the card wasn't solidified if you got injured guess what your spot is gone so guess what now you gotta go out there and wrestle injured you gotta wrestle on painkillers you gotta do all these things to make sure you kept your spot and it's it's just very unfortunate what happened to him, bro. It really is. It's unfortunate what happened to him. It's unfortunate what happened to the uh, his family. You know, like that's it's just tragic. It's tragic. And you know, I am glad that WWE takes more precaution when it comes to their wrestlers. They're very serious when it comes to anything head related, trauma head trauma related. They're very serious about that, as they should be, because at the end of the day. Entertaining us, that's fine. But you got families to go to. We don't know their families. They do. They got families to go to. And you want to be able to live your life and enjoy the rest of your days when your wrestling days is done. Because there's going to be a point where you have to hang it up. You want to be able to go out there and say you gave it your all. You did everything you could do. Now you want to ride off to the sunset with your family. With the people that matter to them the most. Your legacy will always be cemented. But you don't want to tarnish that legacy with, you know, hurting yourself to the point where now your family, you know, doesn't even recognize you. Or the type of medicine that you take changes you. Not by, by purpose, you know, not on purpose, but because you gave so much to the business, you essentially, you know, destroy your body. Now you can't have a good livelihood afterwards i think all wrestlers that go out there and and perform for us they deserve to have a a, a good life after wrestling you don't want to take that away from yourself and your family so it's very unfortunate man but comment down below let me know some other wrestling related videos y'all want me to check out i definitely will appreciate all love support y'all showing on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace